Wow, my face is really fucking close to this camera. Welcome to episode 15 of the Off and Beat podcast. I am your host, Clint, and as you could tell, no cap today, nothing but the truth. Like uh, Bill Cosby being free, he's obviously innocent, because you know, when you have 40 people accusing you of the same exact thing, they all have to be wrong, right? <sighs> you can pull the plug, but I'll always be the one in power. <sighs> I hate, I hate some of the shit I come up with. Am I the first person in history to ever come up with that? Probably not. But I'm the first one to have enough, uh, Courage to come out and say it. Speaking of coming out and uh, saying it, uh, so there was a, I think it was like the Olympic trials. I didn't even know this was like an Olympic sport. That's not even like throwing shade or nothing. Like the Olympics has a lot of fucking different events. You know, it's all about representing your country and all that nonsense. But there's this one called the Hammer Throw or something. And this uh, girl, shit, what's her name? It's Gwen something. Yeah, so basically during, she finished like third place or whatever. And people are mad because she didn't face the direction or something of when the national anthem was playing and shit. And like... Get over it. If she wants to do that, who cares? Like, if it bothers you, don't watch it. I think, you know, what's weird about it, it's like this weird, it's this weird thing, right? And I have this belief across the board when it comes to a lot of things, especially when it comes to, like, protesting about certain things or being an activist. It's funny how people want to tell someone who's protesting or someone who's being an activist how to protest and how to be an activist because it makes them uncomfortable when the whole idea, the whole point of those things is to make you uncomfortable of whatever they're trying to bring attention to. Because if they're trying to bring attention to something, obviously it's something that's near and dear to them and it's something that they see that either a lot of people don't acknowledge or a lot of people would rather just you know act like certain things don't happen now whether you believe in oh like in those people like uh, you gotta it's all about representing your country it's you know respect respect what your country has done for you like you know you need to honor You need to honor the flag. It's like, all right, what do you do on a daily basis to honor the flag? When's the last time you woke up and you did the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm, Sixth grade? When's the last time you actually, like, went out of your way to just go to a memorial, just to go to a veteran's memorial? What is it called? Like a memorial? Basically, the burials where they have all where they bury soldiers. When's the last time you got on the one of those? Just to remind yourself of how lucky you are to be in this country. It's funny how we want to hold people to these standards to respect those who have fallen. And you should. But it's not like you're on a daily basis going out of your way to... Pray for those who have fallen. Most time, you pray for yourself. So, when people try to tell people how to do things that they put themselves in position to even have the awareness brought to them to be able to bring awareness to this issue. She's an Olympic athlete. You can say what you want. If you have such a problem with her doing what she did, 
then you go apply, you go, um, you go qualify for these Olympic events. When you put in the work and you do everything you can to get to certain positions, it's like if you make it pro in something, like who is some person who's just a spectator to tell someone what they need to do because it makes them feel uncomfortable. It's like this whole thing with like, and I have these discussions with friends of mine and some of them, even ones that you would be surprised hate when it gets incorporated with each other. People hate when you see sports shows, debate shows in the sports, like the Skip and Shannon's first, Skip and Shannon Undisputed, the first takes, um, just in sports radio and sports TV, people say that politics and stuff like that get mixed together. Saying sports shouldn't talk about politics. But it's funny because if you turn on these political stations, they have no problem dropping news about sports. They have no problem having their opinion about sports. So why don't politicians, why don't political TV, why don't they just stick in their lane? And it's funny how because you're quote unquote considered um, an expert in political analysis or you're a politician or you're a host on a political TV show because you work for CNN or Fox News or you work for MSNBC, you work for whatever basic network you want to fucking name where the, every day they just talk about the president's dog dying or like, you know, doing constant updates about Congress and shit, right? Why are these the people? Why why have we designated that everything that is said in these avenues, in these occupations, how come everything they say has so much more merit than someone who does another profession. Because it's funny how we want to talk about money. You know, we want to talk about how important money is and how money talks shit walks. That's that's a saying I heard growing up. And when you, when you get older, you start to understand it more. But it's funny how people want to People on these political stations, right, they talk about how money, how the, they always talk about the elitist, they talk about the poorest, and they talk about how athletes are overpaid. They, they basically like, it's, it's, and it's always weird when you watch these sports debate shows, Talk about how athletes are overpaid. When if you look at the salaries that some of these uh, sports analysts are making, you'd be surprised. We're not just talking about millions. We're talking eight figures. 10, 12 millions, right? Depending on the value to your network. And they say here and some NBA player gets like a four-year, $100 million contract. And it may not be a star player. He may be an okay player. But like, how is this guy getting $100 million? That doesn't make sense. And it's weird when you see a person whose job is to literally talk about these people, how they're complaining about these athletes making more money, or, oh, he got paid too much. Because it's almost like this deep-rooted thing where it's like, they be talking about athletes getting overpaid, and they begin paid. Some of these athletes begin paid the sum as these analysts, like the Stephen A. Smiths of the world. You can look up; he gets paid in between eight to ten million a year, which is pretty good. That's just from ESPN alone. He probably makes more money from other things, which in this day that's a lot of fucking money. He may be the highest sports commentator, like. Just sports figure in media. Sports media figure, he's the highest paid. There's really not much debate, I would assume, right now. And it's funny, like, when he's, like, when it'll be the offseason, NBA players start getting signed, and he's four years, 80 mil, four years, 96, five years, 120 mil, and stuff like that. 
and it'll start and it's this weird thing it's where we're taught in life never talk about another man's money but for some reason with athletes it's free game because they make these numbers public why you know does anyone ever wonder why are their salaries how come athletics how come sports is the only profession where their numbers are public the second they sign the contract everyone knows how much they get paid like you don't even have an option to keep that a secret it's like mandatory the media releases it it's public knowledge you can find any NBA player's contract on the internet right now. You can find any NFL player, any MLB player. I'm not asking you to feel quote unquote sympathy or nothing for people that are getting paid exuberant amount of money. But no one, you can you can look at ESPN employees. You could go ESPN, Fox Sports, any news, any news outlet, any sports. You can maybe find someone's salary. I'm not saying you can't, but it's not guaranteed. It's not like if you go on the company website, they just have, hey, look at Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith's, look at um, fucking, fucking Mike Golick, you know, look at Jay Williams, look at um, John Anderson, you know, like any ESP anchor, you can't just go on there and it'll tell you a salary. It may give you a range. Like, this is what we estimate they probably make. But it's like with athletes, like the woman at the Olympics, with athletes, for some reason, we treat them like this is the light, this is what they accepted. They're going to be criticized. Why is this the field that we make TV shows and channels and literally money is made because of newspaper? Well, not newspapers anymore, but websites. Um, any publications of sorts. It's weird that why, how come we have just designated that these are where it's at? <laughs> 